so this is another problem video on chapter number one units and dimensions we will be starting with uh, ncrt problems ncrt is one of the most uh, standardized textbooks and i've seen some students go like what is the point of doing ncrt we are preparing for advanced and all that uh, but you have to understand that everything every competitive exam in india uh, including NEET, j mains and j advanced have their foundation built over the ncrt okay so never underestimate uh, ncrt and you have to understand that this is one of the most important books uh, and also the depth of knowledge in ncrt is very high okay obviously it's not meant for reading mm, uh, reading in the sense that you know you cannot just go and start reading ncrt for that matter because the uh, the explanation in that is very summarized so it is not useful in understanding some stuff okay but once you understand with the help of your teachers any topic then it is mandatory that you do a question at least some questions from ncrt to you know understand uh, the, the the direction in which the content is flowing okay so starting our journey from ncrt problems let us do some ncrt problems okay so let's start with this question okay and as physics students it is, it is very highly expected of you to make diagrams so every time you see me solve a question i'll always try to make uh, diagrams for it so this is an example from uh, ncrt the moon is observed from two diametrically opposite points a and b on earth and the angle theta subtended by the moon by, uh, by the two directions of observation is one degree 54 uh, 1 degree 54 minutes okay given given the diameter of earth to be something into 10 to the power 7 compute the distance of the moon from the earth okay so the question says ki, there are two stations on earth which are diametrically opposite of each other okay and they start observing the moon from their location like this cool and the angle that these observatories subtend on the moon is about uh, 1 degree 54 minutes okay and we have to essentially find out what is the distance of uh, the moon from the earth what is the distance from the moon to the earth okay so i i told you if the distances are very high the curvature would almost look like a straight line and we are entitled to use or we can possibly use the formula which says key you know the l by r where L is the arc length divided by the radius is equal to theta. Okay. And this is the definition of radian. One radian is nothing but uh, the arc length divided by the radius. Okay. So uh, we are entitled to use this uh, definition here. But our pro the first problem you will notice here is that the angle is in degrees, not in radian. So my first job would be to convert this degrees into radians. Okay. So... Uh, if I think about it, uh, 180 degree is pi. Okay, I just have to figure out how much is 1 degree 54 minutes in terms of radians. In terms of radians. Okay, so the thing here uh, is that first you have to convert this thing into completely into degrees first because I cannot deal with 1 degree 54 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is uh, write this like this uh, 54 minutes divided by 60 minutes is one uh, is going to be it will convert this 54 minutes into degrees okay so this is how much uh, this would be 6 9 to 54 6 10 to 60 so that is 0 0.9 degrees so that would mean key this 1 degree 54 minutes is actually 1.9 degrees Okay, so 1 degree and 54 minutes is nothing but 1.9 degrees. I have to find out how much this is in radians. Okay, so I will use the unitary method. Okay, this unknown value is nothing but 1.9 degrees divided by 180 degrees into pi. Okay, and this will come out to be, let's check out, let's, let's use the calculator here. Let's use the calculator here. One second. 1.9 divided by 180 okay and this multiplied by 3.14 that gives me 0 0.0331 radians 
okay so i found out this angle in terms of radius now all i have to figure out ki what is the arc length here in this case this is the arc length and this is the radius this r value is what we have to find out and because this uh, this distance is very very high whatever this value of r is that will be same as the distance from the moon to the earth okay so all i have to do is plug in the value of l by r in this equation i have to just plug in the values so from here r would be equal to l by theta l is nothing but uh, it's given in the question the diameter of the earth is l 1.276 1.276 into 10 raised to power 7 meters is l and theta we just found out is 0 0.0331 radians okay so this will uh, when i do this calculation let me do this calculation okay 1.276 the divided by 0 0.0331 okay gives me 38.5 gives me 38.5 this gives me 38.5 into 10 to power 7 meters so if i uh, make it into standard form that would be 3.85 into 10 to power 8 meters okay so this is the distance of the earth from the moon okay this is the distance of the earth from the moon so this is how you do it if you have any doubts put it in the comments let's move on to the next question okay so let's do this another question and in this question uh, they are asking us to measure the time period of an oscillation of a simple pendulum okay and there are a bunch of readings that are taken for the oscillations of this pendulum and i'm going to note down all this measurements okay so the first measurement was taken to be 2.63 seconds second measurement is 2.56 seconds third measurement is 2.42 seconds fourth is 2.71 and the fifth is 2.80 okay so what i have to do is i have to find out what is the uh, so let me just highlight them i need to find out what is the absolute errors what is the relative error and what is the percentage error okay so error is what the deviation from the true value but uh, how do you find out the true value from given set of measurement the answer is by taking the average true value is nothing but uh, what is the value that we are going to uh, assign it to that particular measurement so i got five readings but if someone asked me what is the time period what is the value that i'm going to give to them is the true value okay so to find out true value all i have to do is this so i'm gonna call this at t stands for true value this is equal to a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5 by 5 okay so this is going to be the true value in this case let me all, uh, let me add all of these values in a calculator okay so all the values are 2.63 plus 2.56 plus 2.42 plus 2.71 plus 2.81 uh, this comes out to be 13.12 seconds okay and I'll, all i have to do is divide this by 5 okay so divide this okay so one second this divided by 5 gives me 2.62 okay 2.62 seconds so this is the true value that i was looking for 2.62 seconds now what i can do is i can find out the individual errors in each of these measurements by subtracting these values okay so uh, a1 minus at will give me exactly how much error is present present in a1 so what i'll do is 2.63 minus 2.61 2.62 that means the error in the first measurement is going to be equal to 0 0.01 okay similarly what is the uh, error in the second measurement this is going to be equal to 2.62 minus 2.56 okay uh, this would be 0 0.06 oh sorry i think i made a mistake here this should be 2.56 minus 2.62 okay remember it's the measured value minus the true value so that means the error in this is minus 0 0.06 very very important stuff here okay 
what is a3 minus a t what is the error in the third measurement it is 2.42 minus 2.62 that means an error of minus 0 0.2 okay minus 0 0.2 Mm, let's do the next one a4 minus a t is going to be equal to 2.71 minus 2.62 makes it 0 0.09 okay and the final one is a5 minus a t which is going to be equal to 2.81 minus 2.62 that means uh, this one would be 0 0.19 okay 0 0.19 cool so what should we do next uh, i found out the individual errors in all of them but to find out the absolute error i have to add all these errors together and when i say add i have to add their absolute values because we are looking for the absolute error here okay so i have to take modulus of all these errors add them together and then divide it by 5 that would be the absolute error in this okay so what i have to do is i'll have to add 0 0.01 add 0 0.06 add 0 0.2 add 0 0.09 and add 0 0.19 so there is one other statement that i always gave in class key errors if you make two mistakes they will they will always add up okay mistakes are not something that you can subtract them even if you uh, like if two quantities are there and you're subtracting them the error in them will still be added together because although they are subtracted mistakes will ne never get subtracted it, the more mistake you make in measuring something all those mistakes will increase the uh, overall mistake in the final answer so even though the quantities are getting subtracted the errors will never get subtracted they will always get added up okay so there is one thing that you have to remember so let me add up all these uh, values here also i have to divide this by five because there are five errors here okay so let me just quickly put this in my calculator uh, 0 0.01 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.19 uh, this is equal to 0 0.55 0 0.55 all these errors added up together would be 0 0.55 when i divide this by 5 i'll get 0 0.11 as the absolute error so this is the value of absolute error if i want to find out relative error relative error okay that is just absolute error which is 0 0.11 divided by the true value so how much uh, error is present in what value okay so the true value was 2.62 so this fraction is nothing it's nothing but the relative error okay so 0 0.11 divided by 2.62 yields 0 0.042 0 0.042 okay so this is the relative error if i want to find out what is the percentage error again it is very very simple okay this is just 0 0.11 divided by 2.62 into 100 this answer will come in percentage which would be 4.2 percent error okay 4.2 percent error so i got all the values we have relative error we have percentage error and we have absolute error okay again if you have any doubts please let me know in the comments okay let's do some another question okay in this next question uh, they are asking us what is the relative error in z is if z is given by a raised to power 4 b raised to power 1 by 3 divided by c d raised to power 3 by 2 so this and this comes under the topic of combinations of error so that means if one function is uh, essentially expressed as a you know as a combination of other functions how would you find the net combined error in z if i know the errors in a b c and d okay so that is what the question is also asking if we know the relative error in a b c d what is the error in z that is the question here okay so let me remind you the formula that we use if we have z as a raised to power some m then delta z by z 
is m times delta a by a that is what i'm going to use in this particular problem this is the formula i'm going to use okay so here this is a combination of four times so what i'm trying to find out here is the relative error delta z by z this is equal to so for the first one here a4 the relative error would be four times delta a by a again where did this come from this this example this formula okay now the relative error in b will get added with this value okay so plus one third of delta b by b okay then plus delta c by c because the power for one uh, for c is just one and at the end it will be plus three by two delta d by d now some people will be asking ki, sir this the c and d are divided won't the error get uh, you know subtracted some people might have that doubt for them the answer is very very simple no matter what happens in the function multiplication division or anything mistakes do not subtract okay mistakes only add up okay so if you make a mistake in calculating a and a mistake in calculating d no matter what your formula says if you are multiplying a and d or dividing a by d these mistakes will always get added up that's why we are putting a plus sign irrespective of the fact whether the value is in the numerator or in the denominator okay so this is the answer for this question let us move on to the next question okay so in this question there are two registers okay the first register has a resistance of 100 plus minus 3 ohms so what does this uh, this notation means that uh, the resistance is 100 ohms and an error of 3 uh, absolute error of 3 ohms is present in 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 our okay the error in r1 is 3 ohms and its value is 100 ohms similarly the resistance to here resistance to here is uh, 200 ohms and the error in the second resistor is 4 ohms okay so this so i've seen some people say ki sir resistance 1 is 100 plus minus 3 ohms so the resistance's maximum value is 103 ohms and the minimum value is 97 ohm. I I I want to say that that particular analysis is not correct. Okay, don't 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 think he, the resistance as uh, is maximum value is 103 ohm. The we have the actual value of the resistance. It is 100 ohms. Okay, and treat the three ohms separately. That three ohms is nothing but the but the error which is generated in calculating r1 this this doesn't mean you have to add 100 plus 3 or 100 minus 3 that particular thing you don't have to do okay treat them separate as separate quantities now if they the, what they are asking is i if i arrange the, these two resistors in the in a series combination what would be the net resistance so uh, we know key uh, we know this formula key if let's say z is equal to a plus b okay then the error in z will also be error in a plus error in b okay so when i combine r1 and r2 in a series combination in a series combination r net will be what r net will be r1 plus r2 it will be r1 plus r2 okay so from here uh, okay so the value itself the r net will be how much it will be 100 plus 200 okay this will be 300 ohms okay i just found out what is the r net just from r1 and r2 okay now i need to find out what is the error in this uh, the r net okay what is the error in the r net again i will write this as delta r1 plus delta r2 this i got from where from this if z is equal to a plus b delta z will be equal to delta a plus delta b formula can be found in combination of errors okay so from here i found out so that means the error in r net will come out to be 3 ohms plus 4 ohms which is 7 ohms okay so how will i write the final answer the final answer i will write like this uh, so the final uh, if you keep the resistance uh, resistances in series the net resistance is 300 ohms plus minus 7 ohms Again, I'm going to uh, repeat one statement that I said before. This doesn't mean our resistance is 307 or 293. You don't have to do 300 plus 7 or 300 minus 7. 300 is the value of the resistance, measured resistance, and 7 ohm is the uh, is the uh, error which is present in this calculation. Okay, so treat them separately. I'm saying this one more time. The next part of the question asks, see what, what will be the net resistance if we arrange it in a parallel 
in a parallel series okay so i know for parallel the net resistance is how much the net resistance is one upon r1 plus one upon r2 okay so if you have a uh, resistance like this r1 and r2 which are parallel to each other and i have applied a battery so these kind of questions you might have done before okay so the net resistance in this parallel case will be uh, 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 will be equal to 1 upon r net now you have to understand that there is no direct formula for this okay we do not have any direct formula for this uh, from in the combination of errors so what i'm going to do is take a little bit of calculus which might have been taught uh, as part of the basic module okay uh, and then do this problem with this differentiation concept okay so if i differentiate the left hand side with respect to x okay so we have r net one upon r net uh, so the differentiation for one upon x is minus one upon r net square okay but remember this is not x and i am differentiating with respect to x so by chain rule i will write dr net upon dx i'll write like this this will be equal to i'm differentiating now one by r1 with respect to x okay so this will be how much minus one upon r1 square dr1 by dx plus minus one upon r2 square dr2 by dx okay so what did i just do this is just basic differentiation that i did on one upon r net one upon r1 and one upon r2 so what can I do from here? I can just cancel out all the dx's because dx's are common here. So dx, dx, dx will be cancelled out. So if I write this formula, the formula would look something like this. dr net by r net square will be equal to dr1 by r1 square plus dr2 by r2 square where did the minus signs go there is minus everywhere so i just cancelled out the minus signs from the left hand side and the right hand side okay so from here there is a very important statement when errors are small dr represents what dr is nothing but change very small change okay now for very small values of errors dr net is nothing but delta r net okay so delta r net by r net square will be equal to delta r1 by r1 square plus delta r2 by r2 square okay again uh, don't be afraid that okay so there's a calculus involved in this uh, is it is it uh, very complex the thing is the basic differentiation that we have taught in class only one formula that i have used other than that everything is same and the reason i have to use that here is because there is no direct set pattern to uh, you know solve this kind of a problem okay we we learned the combination for z is equal to a plus b we learned the combination for you know a multiplied by b uh, you have also done it for a raised to power m divided by b raised to power n so all these combination we have studied okay but this one is and it does not fit into any of these categories so that that is why i had to involve calculus here okay so anytime you get something like this that does not follow any of this combination all you have to do is little bit of differentiation and then cancel out the dx and then just uh, at the last point in time just say key for small values of small values i'll write this down for small values of error dr is nothing but it is delta r okay so whatever in in case of very small errors delta um, r is nothing but dr okay so that is the concept that i used here from here from here all i have to do is uh, uh, plug in the values delta r net is what i need to find out r net i can find out from normal formula so if 200 ohms and 200 ohms are arranged in parallel what is going to be the r net so 1 by r net will be equal to simply 1 by 100 plus 1 by 200 okay so r net will be 100 into 200 divided by 100 plus 200 okay so that means 200 into 100 divided by 300 so two this cancels out okay so you have 200 divided by 3 200 divided by 3 okay so this would be close to how much will be this so 200 divided by uh, by 3 3 6 18 
to 66.66 okay so this is the r net so I'll, I'll i'll take this calculation a little bit away from this because i was calculating the error no so while calculating the error i will need the value for r net so i'm gonna i'm gonna use this later on for now i'm going to move this i'm gonna move this part elsewhere okay so i got the value of r net now delta r net divided by 66.66 square is going to be equal to delta r1 by uh what is it uh, okay i also know the value of r delta r1 right in the question it is already given delta r1 is delta r1 is 3 ohms okay so 3 by 100 square 3 by 100 square plus uh this was what was the error in the second one the second register the error is 4 ohms so 4 by 200 square, 4 by 200 square. So from here, I'll be able to figure out what is the value of delta R net. Okay. So this will calculate, when you calculate this one, when you calculate this one, the value comes out to be 1.8. It will come out to be 1.8 ohms. Okay. So your final answer will be nothing but 66.66 plus minus 1.8 ohms this is the r net if you arrange the see uh, arrange the resistors in parallel condition okay any doubts in this please put it in the comments okay so this is how you do this is how you do the question okay okay let us do this question Again, one other NCRT question this is, <clears throat> okay, so the question says ki a new system of length is chosen, okay, we know, uh, we know ki in SI system, one meter means there is a specific length that we take as one meter, but this is a new system of units where one, uh, whatever this one unit of length, it is different from one meter, okay, it is so, so chosen in such a way that the speed of light in vacuum is unity. Okay, usually what is the speed of light? Speed of light is 3, 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meters per second is uh, the speed of light. But in the new system, let's call this L dash. Okay, L dash is a new unit for length. In this new, new system, the speed of light is 1 L dash per second. 1 L dash per second. Okay. What is this L dash? L dash is uh, they are saying there is a new length system here, new a new unit of length that I am representing with one L dash. Okay, so comparing these two equations, you will understand that three into ten to power eight meters is one L dash. How did I get this? Technically, these these two uh, you know values may appear different. Okay, one on the left hand side you have three into ten to power eight uh, is equal to one one on the right hand side but the actual speed of light is not subjected to what we choose as a unit yes yes or no because speed of light is a constant no matter what kind of system you use if you use a centimeter system if you use uh, you know uh, the si system or any imaginary system the actual speed of light is not going to change so that is why i put a equality sign in between and from there i understood key oh in this new system 1 L dash, which is the new unit of length, is actually 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters in the original length. In the original, uh, the, the, the SI unit system, it is actually 3 into 10 to the power 8. Now, they are asking what is the, the question is, ki, what is the distance between sun and earth in terms of unit of light takes uh, 8 minutes and 20 seconds to cover this distance. Okay, so this is another fact which is given to us, ki light takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds so this means 8 6 uh, eight, six, four, yeah, 480 seconds plus 20 seconds so this, this means 500 seconds okay so that means light takes 500 seconds from uh, to reach from sun to earth so that means the distance between the sun and earth is how much speed into time yes distance is equal to speed into time which means 3 into 10 to power 8 into 500 okay so the distance is how much the distance is uh, let's not even calculate. Let's keep it like this. This is this is given to us in meters. I want to know this. Uh, you know what is this length in terms of 
in terms of the new unit system. I know that 3 into 10 to power 8 meters, 3 into 10 to power 8 meters is 1 L dash, 1 L dash. What I have to find out is how much is 3 into 10 to power 8 meters into 500 is in terms of L dash. So the answer is very, very simple. Cross multiply and then divide by this and then you will get key. this is nothing but 500 L dash. Okay. So basic unitary method, the, the length between the sun and earth in the new, uh, new system of units is just 500 units. Okay. So L dash is something we chose. So you can write just units. 500 units okay so that is how you do this kind of question okay let us do this question next okay it's a question based on error again so we are given the equation ki p is equal to a cube b square divided by okay divided by root c multiplied by d okay so this is what uh, the relationship is one more, few more things are given. Ki the percentage error in A, delta A by A into 100 is given to us. It's 1%. Okay. Delta B by B is given to us as, uh, into 100, sorry, into 100. It's percentage error. This is the formula I'm writing for percentage error. Delta B by B into 100 is given to us as 3%. Delta C by C into 100 is given to us as 4%. And delta D by D into 100 is given to us as 2%. Okay. So from combination of errors, I can tell you this much that delta P by P will be actually three times delta A by A. Okay. And uh, plus two times delta B by B plus half times delta C by C plus delta D by D. Where did this come from? Okay, so first one property I have used is key if z is a raised to power m, then delta z by z is how much? It is m delta a by a. This is the property that I have used to figure out this, this here. Okay, and if quantities are multiplied or divided together, er the error between them is always added. That is why I, I have put a plus sign between the errors of all of these. Okay, and uh, C under root C is nothing but C raised to power half. That is why this half came. Okay, Th that is why this half came. Now, all I need to do is multiply by 100 on both sides. So, here we'll get delta P by P into 100 is equal to 3 delta A by A into 100. Okay, plus 2 times delta B by B into 100 plus half times delta c by c into 100 okay into 100 plus delta d by d into 100 okay now these values are given to us these guys we go uh, 1 3 4 and 2 1 3 4 and 2 so 3 into 1 2 into what is delta b by b is 3 percent plus half of 4 percent 4 percent and then the last one is 2 percent Okay, so this is 2%. So this will be how much? This will be 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 2 that is equal to 30. Okay, so the percentage error, the percentage error in P is how much? It is 13%. As easy as that. If you have any doubts, just ask me in the comment section. Oh, there is actually one more part. What, what is, uh, how can you <coughs> round off 3.763? The answer is 8 3.8 you can put it if uh, if they are asking for the first decimal point this would be 3.8 if they are asking for the second decimal you can do it 3.76 also okay but usually they are asking usually whenever they doesn't say anything actually they are just asking for the first decimal point that means here in this case it would be 3.78 why because 6 is greater than 5 once it goes beyond uh, beyond 5 we uh, Go to the next integer so it will be 3.8 in this case okay so other than that this is uh, pretty easy okay okay <clears throat> the last thing i want to tell you is that this video is designed just to let you approach the uh, path towards ncrt it's no way the complete solution of ncrt okay this is going to help you to start solving questions from ncrt Okay, this will give you a basic approach to 
uh, doing NCRT. And again, NCRT is one of the most important books. Okay, so try to do as many questions as you can from NCRT because NCRT is one of the fundamental books for all competitive preparations as well as it will help you perform good in your school exams. Okay. So with that, I'd like to end this video uh, and also try to do as uh, after the video, just try to do as many questions you can from NCRT. You can always ask me doubts in school or classes, wherever you meet me, you can ask me doubts. Uh, solutions to all the back questions are also easily available on the network. Okay. Uh, so with that, I will say goodbye and I'll see you again.